Okay, very good. Let's bring in our jury. All right, jury entering. Okay, very good. Have a seat, everybody. We are um, welcome back. We're ready to proceed. You may continue. <clears throat> I believe we were talking about May 16th when you uh, came by to pick up Felicia Williams from her home. Okay. You recall that? Yes. Now, after you had picked Felicia Williams up from, from uh, her home, at some point you had her call her mother to let her know that she was with you, right? Yes, sir. This is after you had picked her up, right? Yes. Okay. Was it, on previous occasions when you would get Felicia from her home or you would go somewhere with Felicia, would you contact the mother yourself or would no. you always have Felicia do it? Never. That was the first time I told her to contact her mama. It, she, her, mama her mother never knew when Felicia leave or go. So that was the father's. I took Felicia... And that's why I told her to call her mother. Okay. So there was never a time... No. Let me finish. I'm sorry. There was never a time in the past when you called Felicia's mother and said, I have Felicia. No. Okay. And there was never a time in the past where you asked Felicia to call her mom and say, tell your mom you're with me. No. Okay. Right. Now, when you came to pick up Felicia on May 16th from her home... Um, her sister, um, <coughs> Jeremiah was present. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And Jeremiah wanted to join you guys. Uh, in fact, she said to you, can I come along as well? No, she didn't. Little Brenda did. The you little did? Little her Brenda? Little, yes. Her little sister wanted to come okay. along. She didn't. When you say little Brenda, is that someone who you also sometimes refer to as Miss Brenda? Yeah. Okay, yeah. but Miss Brenda is, is little, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was little Brenda who asked to come along. Yeah. Okay. So the older sister, um, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. who I believe is, what, a year older or younger than Felicia, do you recall? Oh, one. One, one year, year older? older. Okay. Yes. Um, Jeremiah didn't, didn't say, I want to come along. No. Okay. And you didn't tell Jeremiah, uh, no, you can't come along because I need to talk to Felicia about the problems that she's causing me at work. You didn't say I that. didn't say exact words like that. Well, did you I say little, something Brenda, like that? Brenda wanted to come along, and I was speaking to her uh, fatty girl as, and, and preferred as that, yes. Saying what? I said that I needed to talk to um, Sugar Plum. About what? Coming to the workplace. And the fact that you didn't want to come into the workplace, right? Right, and that was correct. Okay. That was right. only right. And that's why you wanted to talk to her alone, right? I was going to talk to her at McDonald's, yes, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Do you recall calling Cha-Cha and telling her about your concerns about Felicia coming to your workplace? Um, I don't remember. Okay, so you may have done that. I may have. So you go to you leave you leave Felicia's house, you go to Checkers, right? Yes. Okay. And there was some testimony about it's supposed to be McDonald's, then it's Checkers. Bottom line, you end up going to a fast food place and you get some food, right? Well, the the deal was to go to the McDonald's to sit down with her. I didn't look at Checkers when he went to when we went to Checkers. I didn't. Look at Chuck that you could sit down and talk to her. Well, when you say the deal was to go to McDonald's and talk to her, you didn't tell uh, Felicia that when you picked her up. Right. You didn't tell her sisters that when you picked her up. That go to McDonald's? Right. Yeah, no, I just told her I didn't right. need to talk to her. Okay. And um, so this is a decision that was made and then changed at some point between you and, and Mr. Ritchie. No. He surprised me that he went the opposite way. Okay. We were supposed to went to McDonald's. So because you were so concerned about the fact that, that 
you ended up going to, to Checkers and not McDonald's, you decided not to leave Felicia Williams' site after that, right? Correct. Well, that's not accurate because you left, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So, let's talk about that. You, you had arrived at the apartment, right? Yes, sir. And um, it's decided that you were going to go and get some weed. Yes. All right. Now, at that point, you had had um, a molly and a half, or at least one molly. He was one molly he gave me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, and he didn't force you to take the molly, right? No, he knew that, that that's what I took. That's what you liked, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, when you're getting ready to go and get the weed, Felicia wants to go with you, right? Um, I told her she was going to go with me. And well, he, okay. You told her that she. Was I, said, I told her, her to come on. Okay, and then what happened? And then he said, "My no, you don't have no license. Um, she don't need to be driving in the car with you, knowing that you don't have no license. You better go and get some weed." Wasn't it in fact? a community decision between yourself and, and Granville Ritchie uh, that it wasn't a good idea for her to go with you because you're buying weed and your license was suspended? I didn't have no license. Okay. Did you decide, along with Granville Ritchie, that you would go by yourself? Yeah. Because it wasn't a good idea that Felicia would go with you when you're driving without a license to buy weed? Well, I, I looked at the day, I was like, yeah, you is correct, yeah. Well, when he, he was, said it, I said, yeah, you are correct. I, I overviewed it, yes. He, I mean, he didn't force you to do that. You both came up to the, with that conclusion, right? Right. Right? Right, sir. In fact, on May 19, 2014, um, you met with Sergeant Roca with the Tampa Police Department, right? Mm hmm Yes? Yes. I'm not sure what the person's name is. I remember meeting with an officer with the Tampa Police Department, right? Where, Burger King or the police station? I'm sorry? At Burger King or the police no, station? No, no, no. At, at, at the Tampa Police Department on the 19th of May. You met with the police officer and, and you were questioned. I believe so. I'm not sure. Refresh my memory. Well, you went there along with the detective from Temple Terrace, and you met with a, a person by the name of Sergeant Roca with the okay. Tampa Police Department. You recall that? Yeah. I okay. So. He asked you if, if, if you'd been doing any drugs over the past 24 hours, and you told him no on May 19th, three days after May 16th, right? I don't remember meeting with the police. Do you recall... Telling the police officer that the girl wanted to. Go she says she doesn't remember if he wants to show her a statement that she made to refresh her recollection, but she thinks she doesn't remember. Yeah, you know, I think I can ask you. Go ahead and ask the question, the see if she recalls making the statement, and then if she says she doesn't recollect, then you can show it to her. Thank you, Honor. Do you recall telling Sergeant Roca she said that the girl wanted to go but didn't? didn't because he was afraid she, if she was pulled over by the police, she, Wiley, would get in trouble for not having a driver's license and for having marijuana. And then Miss Wiley said that both Miss Wiley and Trevor thought it was safe for the girl to stay at Trevor's apartment. Okay, so what are you trying to get at, sir? Do you recall saying that to the law enforcement officer? In a way, yes. To explain myself, yes. Yes. When you came back from, from getting the weed, uh, you were having problems getting, punching in the code to get into the apartment complex, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, but then at some point, uh, you were able to follow another car into the apartment complex without having to punch the code, The right? first time? Right, the, the first, first time. The first time, sure. No, the, it was a young guy, a young little boy opened the gate for me. Okay. Are there, after you arrived initially on the 16th with Mr. Ritchie and, and Felicia Williams, are there three other times or two other times that you enter the apartment complex in a car? Um, I believe so, yeah. yeah. Well, my yeah. question is, two or three? I'm not, how many times? I, I, I didn't count how many times. Okay. Well, 
you come back after getting the weed. Okay. Do you actually get inside the apartment complex before you go to CVS? No. You sure? No. I'm Not sure. sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I turned around because he didn't. I couldn't open the gate. Um, he wasn't answer the phone. Then I turned around and when I went to CVS. Okay. We see when you go to CVS, you go in there, you're not there very long, and then you come back out, right? Right. I okay. had asked the clerk at the front. Yes. Sure. And CVS is just minutes from the apartment, right? Yes, sir. And then you go back to the apartment. Yes, sir. Okay. And um, at this point, you get in. That's when the young boy lets mm -hmm. you in? All yes. Right. And um, it's later on when you come back with your brother, okay. the person you refer to as your brother, that you guys pull in behind another car. Tailgate. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, when you get back from CVS, mm -hmm. um, you're there for about two hours? Well, CVS. When you get back from CVS, before you leave again, you're there for about two hours. Is that, is that about right? Yes. Okay. You come in um, and um, you decide, do you have some Hennessy when you come in? When I came in? Right. I, after I finished praying, yeah. I came back out out of the the closet and I took I believe I took a shot okay all right so so first you go in the closet you're there about 10 minutes praying yeah with the door probably, closed probably like three not even 10 minutes I ain't one in that long do you even have any idea how long you were there no but I know it wasn't that long okay all right 10 minutes no for, for a probably, period for a period of time it wasn't that long it was about like three or five minutes sir okay and um then you had some Hennessy Right? You got a shot? Yeah. And then you guys had sex? Yes. All right? Uh, and Mr. Ritchie expresses concerns about the fact that Felicia had left the apartment. Right? Yeah. Correct. He's worried about the fact that she hasn't come back from the apartment. Right? To you. He's saying, I'm concerned about Felicia not, not having come back. back right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you basically tell him, relax, it's okay, she'll be back. Right. Okay. Uh, because you knew her better than he did, right? Correct. And you were comfortable that she wandered off, she did her thing, and she'll be back. Right. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you recall, I, I believe you, around 8.30 or so, is when you call Felicia's sister, right? I believe so, yes, sir. Okay. Is that Cha-Cha? <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, your phone records will show whenever you call her, right? Yes, sir. All right. And um, are you still at the apartment at that time? I think so. Okay. All right. And then at some point you call your brother, the person you referred to as your brother. Mm -hmm. What's his name again? Kenny. Kenny. And um, you meet up with him shortly before you meet up with Cha-Cha and with law enforcement. Is that I correct? was standing with Cha-Cha before he came. I'm sorry? I was standing with Cha-Cha before my brother came. Okay. When did you? When and where did you f first meet Cha-Cha? At um, the liquor store on 22nd. Okay. And late. All right. Was that... How, what was the time period from the time when uh, you called Cha-Cha oh. until you met her? Do you know? No, I don't know the time period. Okay. How did you get there? He, to the liquor uh, store. I walked. Okay. How far of a walk is that from, from the grandma, apartment? From my grandma's house. Oh, from your grandma's house. That's right. You went from grandma's house. Yes. How far? How far was that? Um, that's like a two or three minute walk. Okay. How did you get to your grandma's house? Um, Grandville dropped me off there. Okay. So then you speak with Cha Cha at the liquor store for how long? I like 10, 15 minutes until my brother got there. Okay. And um, at that point, you have not done anything to try to look for Felicia Williams, right? Other than when I went to CVS. Yeah. Other than going to CVS. Yes. Right. And we've seen the video. You go in, you come out, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you didn't drive around the neighborhood? For me, not. I, I don't remember. Right. Um, you go back in the apartment praying. Drinking Hennessy and having sex, right? Uninfluenced, yes. Right. Okay. Um, so, when you talk to Cha-Cha, what do you tell Cha-Cha? 
about what, what happened to Felicia? Oh, she's gone. I can't find her. Uh -huh. You tell her basically that you're at the apartment with Vivian, right? Correct. And uh, Cha Cha, while you were showering, she left. Correct. No idea what happened to her, right? Right. Okay. Uh, so is it Cha Cha, is, is that the first person you tell that story to? Yes. Okay. And, um, and then you tell this, that same story to the different law enforcement officers that, that show up at what, uh, by the Burger King? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you continue to tell that story to all of Felicia's family members throughout the night? Yes, sir. Okay. The second story you tell is the next day, right? Yes. And that's when you indicate to law enforcement that Vivian is actually Trevor. Yes. You say Vivian is actually a man or do you just say, you know A man. You say Vivian is a man. Yeah. And 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 the person's name is Trevor, right? Yes sir. Okay. And let me let me go back to to your first story briefly. I believe you'd indicated in your on direct examination that Granville Ritchie had told you not to say that he was there, right? Correct. Okay, because he was concerned about being a man being there, right? Correct. And he was also concerned about uh, having guns there, right? Correct. Okay. And beyond that, he didn't tell you what to say. He just yeah. said... You know, let him let them know that it was a woman there, right? And exactly. Which is his mother, and that's it, right? Yes, and the, he gave me his mother name and his sure, mother number. Sure. The rest of the story is your story, right? Correct. And the the part of that story where you say that you took uh, Vivian's keys and you walk and and you searched for Felicia Williams for three hours. Complete BS, right? Yes, that was a lie, sir. Well, okay. Is that a legal term? Sorry, Your Honor. That was a lie, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, so the next day you tell the story and, and, and you, you say that Trevor was there, right? Yes. Okay. And now you indicate that you, the two of you picked up Felicia Williams, right? Okay. Yes? Yes. Put on a cartoon. Yes. For Felicia Williams to watch. Yes. And then went to the bedroom, take a shower, right? Yes. And then after about thirty-five minutes, checked on Felicia, and Felicia was gone. Correct. And then again, you say you were looking for Felicia Williams for three hours. It's not true. Right? No, it wasn't true. In the second story, you indicate that Granville parked the car outside of the CVS and you, and you went inside to look for her. Is that true? No, it wasn't true. So that's your second story, basically, right? Yes. Okay. I told a lot of stories. In, but told I, a lot of stories. Yeah, I lied. Right. I can admit that. Yes, I did lie. Yes, I was on drugs. That's all I have. Okay, redirect. Ms. Wiley. Yes. You lied twice to law enforcement, correct? With these two separate stories. Yes. And then ultimately when you learned that Felicia Williams yes. was found dead, you decided to tell the truth. Yep. I want to make this crystal clear. Have I or Mr. Harmon ever made any promises to you no. or spoken to you at all about the charges that you are facing. No. Your defense attorney that is here in this courtroom, he represents you on those charges, correct? Yes. 
and he told you he was going to be here to watch you testify. Yes. When you came down to the state attorney's office on August 7th of 2014, that's when you were given, you gave a sworn statement at yes, the state attorney's office. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Harmon was present and another prosecutor, Ms. Hyman. Yes, ma'am. And that was from May 16th of 2014 to August 7th of 2014 a couple months after the incident. Yes. You had already been arrested on May 17th for the charges that you were facing. Mm -hmm. Is yes, that correct? Yes. For the third degree felony? Yes. For lying? Yes. When it was explained to you on that date about you could potentially face a first degree felony, that was if you did not tell the truth. Is that correct? Correct. At that time, you were not facing a first-degree felony. No. No other charges than the one that you're still facing today. Is that correct? Correct. Then again, you were questioned by defense counsel at a deposition that you were asked about previously. Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? Yes. Where you came down on June 17th of 2019. Mm -hmm. Was that the date that you came down? Yes, And you had to answer questions? that Mr. Bunvan asked you? Yes, ma'am. And that was over five years after the incident? Yes. Did you tell the truth during your statement on August 7th of 2014? Yes. Did you tell the truth on June 17th of 2019? Yes. Relating to the truth when they interviewed me, yes. As far as I can remember, yes. And did you include and you told the lies that you originally told and then you told the truth, is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> you were asked about the difference between ecstasy and molly and it's different when you look at it. What do you mean by that? If you put it right here on the table right here, it was one look like a circle and one look like a crystal. So I'm saying that it makes me feel the same as in sexual, energetic, talkative, stuff like that. But it's not the same ecstasy pill. You can say it's ecstasy. Do I know exactly what's in those two different things? No. On May 16th of 2014, did you take the crystal form the or crystal. the pill? The crystal. On May on May. 16th of 2014 when the defendant showed you the bag when you were driving to the apartment. Was that a crystal form or a pill form? The molly? The crystal form. Okay. When you were talking to the defendant on May 16th of 2014 when you were at work and you were talking to the defendant about wanting to talk to Felicia about your concerns about her, okay. whose idea was it to go and sit down and talk to Felicia at the McDonald's? His idea. And was it his idea that he be present for that conversation? Yes. Was the idea that the McDonald's was going to be close to Felicia Williams' home? Which is on Hillsborough. That's what I thought. And when you left Felicia's home, did you go in that direction at all? No. Whose idea was it to go to Checkers? His. Did he originally say that he wanted to take her to his house because his mother had prepared food? No. When, when was the conversation about his mother had prepared food and you said, well, she's not going to eat your mother's food? As I seen that we was going in a different direction, I had asked her to throw it out there like, is you hungry? Did you eat? She was like, no, I just ate a bag of chips. And then, which was our idea was to take her to McDonald's. And then he looked at like, uh, he just said out of the blue, he said, my mama cooked. Um, and I'm looking like she's not going to eat that food. And then that's when he went to Checkers. And so that was his decision to go to Checkers? Yes. And you said that that was not a place that you could sit down and talk to Felicia Williams. I didn't at. look at it like that. When the defendant showed you 
the pill that you took on May 16th of 2014, was that the same pill that you took or that he gave you um, the first night you met him? Yep. So he knew a couple nights before how it was going to affect you that you become more sexual. Yep. And he offered you that pill when you were driving, you were sitting in the passenger seat and he was driving you with Felicia that day. Yeah. When you got to the apartment and you spoke to Felicia and then he had asked you to go and purchase marijuana, between the time you got there and he asked you to go purchase marijuana, did anything sexual happen between you and the defendant? When you were leaving to co-purchase the marijuana, did you say anything to Felicia about coming with you to go to your grandfather's house to purchase yeah. the marijuana? Yeah. What did you tell her? I told her, come on. Did she go with you? She was, she was getting up to go, and he was like, no, she don't need to go. You don't have no driver's license, and you fit to go and get um, weed. So his, it was his idea that she was going to be safer staying with him than riding along with you? Pretty much. When you went back to the apartment after purchasing the marijuana, did you enter in co the, the code that he had provided you? Yes. Did the code work that he had provided you? No. Nope. When you went back after CVS, did you attempt to use that same code to get in the gate? Yep. Did it work? No, it didn't. Do you remember what code you pushed in? No. You stated yesterday that it was the same number the over same and number over. Over and over, yep. It was a little confusing on cross examination, so I want to make it clear. When you, when he, the defendant, when you two left the apartment that night, you didn't go, he didn't drop you off at the liquor store, did he? No, he dropped me off to my grandma's house. At your grandmother's house. Was that near the liquor store? Yeah. It was also stated that, and then referenced that the, the call logs would be more accurate, what time you called Cha Cha. Showing DD6. Cha Cha Baby, the last call down here on the last page, that call at 2116 hours is 916. Is that when you spoke to Cha Cha about meeting you at the liquor store? Yeah. To see where she want me to meet her at. And did you call her when you were at your grandmother's walking or um, I was before you got to your grandmother's? Well, I was standing outside my grandma's house. The second lie that you told, it was discussed here that the cartoon was placed on the TV for Felicia and that you and the defendant went in the shower. Yeah. Did sex occur during that shower? No. You and Granville didn't have sex or the lie that um, you told, did it include sex or not sex? The second lie, when you said that there was a man involved. Did I let them know? Say it again? Okay. The second lie you told right. when you finally said that it was a man. Okay. But it wasn't the truth, not the third true. statement, the second one. Right. Where you said it wasn't a woman, it was a man. Mm -hmm. And defense counsel asked you that you placed a cartoon on mm -hmm. for Felicia Williams, mm -hmm. which was a lie. That didn't happen, correct? Correct. And then you went into the shower with this man, Trevor. Correct. Did sex occur, or was no. it just the shower, that you two were in the shower? 
No, it, it, we wasn't. We ain't had sex in the shower. That was the lie. That I it was a lie. Yes. But did you tell law enforcement yes. that you had sex? Yes. But that was a lie. Yes. It okay. Was. When you and the defendant came up with this story initially, the first story that it couldn't be that you left Felicia with him, is that correct? Right. It needed to be a woman. Right. Is that right? Right. Who was the first person that said it needed to be a woman? He did. Did he provide you with the woman's name? Yes. What was the name? Vivian. Did he provide you with his mother's phone number? Yes, he did. And did he tell you to reach out to her? Yes. Did he tell you to tell her this lie? Yeah, he said tell her lie and let, let her know. I'm showing you DD4 text messages that occurred between you and the defendant on May 16th of 2014 that's already been introduced into evidence. And I'm showing you um, this text here. Was that the phone number and the name that he had provided you to contact? Yes? Yes. Publishing DD4. On May 17th of 2014, my husband, number 727-288-3413, the message content, Vivette, 813-793. If I hold my hand here, it'll, it comes more clear. The content of the text, Vivette, 813 793-5727 now. Was that a message the defendant sent you to contact Vivette, his mother, and to contact her now at 12.23 a.m. on May 17, 2014? Yes. <clears throat> And when you contacted Gloria Gibson, Vivian, mm -hmm. Vivette, mm -hmm. and you told her that this was a lie that you needed her to cooperate with, right. she knew this was a lie because she was never there at the house with Felicia Williams, correct? Correct. correct. Can I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes. No further questions, Judge. Okay, thank you. May this witness be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're free to go. Thank you. All right. See, who's your next witness? Does anyone need a comfort break before we go to the next witness? Okay. See, no hands. I take that as a no. All right. State, who's your next witness? The state would call Nathan Teal. Sir, if you'd step up here, please, this way, and have a seat right here in the witness stand. You may proceed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you please state your first and your last name? Nathan Teal. And how do you spell your last name? T E E L. And do you know Ebony Wiley? Yes. Are you related to her? Yeah. How are you related to her? Granddaughter. On May 16th of 2014, did Ebony Wiley contact you via phone uh, regarding purchasing some marijuana? Yeah. Did you have any marijuana on that date? No, I didn't. I told her I would get her some. Yeah. And who is it that you were going to get her some marijuana from? Mo. 
Do you also know him as Waldemar Vernon? Yeah. yeah. How is it that you were going to get marijuana from Mo? Well, he had some. Um, did you relay that information to Ebony Wiley? Yes. Did she come to your home on May 16th of 2014? Yes. Did you have contact with her on that day when she arrived there? No. She just came. Did you ever see Mo there at your house that day? No, I had called him. Were you later interviewed by law enforcement regarding putting Ebony Wiley in contact with Mo for the marijuana? Yes. When she had contacted you originally about how to purchase this marijuana, did she call you on the phone? I don't know. She came. She came to the house. Do you recall if she called you prior to coming to your house? I think she... I don't know. I, I can't remember that. Whether she called or not, but I know she came. Would looking at your statement about what you allowed law enforcement to look at when you were... Um, you allowed them to look at your phone when you, they interviewed you. Would that refresh your memory? I guess. You could look at this and let me know if that refreshes your memory in any way. No. Mm. I don't Do you recall whether or not you let law enforcement look at your phone to confirm Ebony and had in fact called you? No, I don't, don't I don't remember, remember him doing I don't remember him <clears throat> looking at my phone though. Okay. Yeah. Cross examination? No, thank you. Okay. Then this witness be excused. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, sir. You're free to go. All right, state, can you turn next witness? Walmart Vernon. Do you swear from testimony you about the given this cost proof the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Step this way, have a seat in the witness stand. Good morning, Mr. Vernon. How you doing? I just need you to make sure you speak in that microphone so we can hear Good you loud and, loud and clear, okay? Yes, ma'am. Just make sure I can answer, ask my entire question before you speak because we have a court reporter taking down everything we say. Yes, ma'am. Can you please state your name for the record? Waldemar Alfred Vernon. And do you have a nickname? My family calls me Wimpy. Do you ever go, are you ever called or referred to by Mo? Yes, ma'am. Does, does Nathan Teal refer to you as Mo? Yes, ma'am. Because he didn't know my real name. My, my big brother's name is Mo. Um, do you know Ebony Wiley? Yes, ma'am. On May 16th of 2014, did you come into contact with Ebony Wiley on that day? I don't remember the date, but yes, I did, I believe. Was there... Um, was that the same day law enforcement later questioned you about? Was there a day that law enforcement questioned you about having contact with Ebony Wiley? Yes, law enforcement did get in contact with me about it. And did you provide uh, a written statement with regards to that day that you had contact with her? Yes, ma'am. And provide that to law enforcement? Yes, ma'am. So we're going to talk about that day. Do you remember that day? Somewhat, yes, ma'am. Um, did you see Ebony Wiley on that day? Yes, ma'am. Where is it that you saw her? On Nathan Teal's porch. And did Ebony Wiley arrive there to meet you? I was already there. I was on, sitting on the porch, but she did pull up in a car. Um, what kind of car did she pull up in? Do you recall? I remember a gray Lexus. And did she get out of the car? Yes, ma'am. Did you and Ebony Wiley engage in conversation? Not really. Just for a few, like a minute or two. Did you know why Ebony Wiley was coming to see you on that day? Yes, ma'am. And what was your understanding as to why she was coming to see you? Uh, to get, I want to say, like $10 or $15 worth of weed. Did you have um, marijuana on you on that day? Yes, ma'am. Did you give Ebony Wiley marijuana on that day? Yes, ma'am. 
Did she pay you for that marijuana? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall approximately how long Ebony Wiley was there on that front porch? I don't really remember, but it wasn't long. Maybe three to seven minutes at the max. Who was the first person to leave? Did you leave first or did Ebony Wiley leave first? I believe she would have left first. And did she leave in the silver Lexus? Yes, ma'am. How much marijuana is it that you gave her? Like 10 or 15 dollars. Like just something for a blunt. Maybe a moment, Your Honor? Yes. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? Uh, yes, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, my name is Willie Barr, um, uh, formerly retired police officer from Tampa Police Department. And how do you spell your last name? It's spelled uh, B-A-H-R. You said you were previously employed with the Tampa Police Department? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. And how long did you work for the Tampa Police Department? Uh, approximately 26 years. Uh, what were your duties with the Tampa Police Department in May of 2016? Uh, I was assigned to the Special Operations Unit, specifically the Marine Units and the Dive Team. Uh, what did you do um, with that unit? Um, in the latter part of that time, I was uh, the team leader for the dive team and uh, tactical coordinator for the Marine unit. Did you have prior law enforcement experience prior to um, becoming employed with the T Tampa Police Department? Yes, ma'am. Uh, prior, uh, I had three years. I served as a, uh, a military police investigator for the United States Army. Did you um, come to assist, or were you asked to assist Tam uh, Temple Terrace Police Department in May of 2014 regarding a homicide investigation? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what specifically were you requested to do? So uh, one of our uh, TPD investigators, uh, Detective John Columbia, actually contacted us uh, through or for uh, Temple Terrace to ask uh, if we could conduct an in-water search or an underwater search uh, in the Courtney Campbell area, Old Tampa Bay. And who is um, John Columbia? How was he employed with Tampa Police Department? Uh, at the time, he was a homicide detective. And when you were requested to um, assist them in, in locating these items, what specific information were you given as to where you were going to conduct the search? So um, one of the things that we were asked to look for was a, uh, anything that resembled like a suitcase, a medium to a large size suitcase. Um, and we were also given a general area with the addition of some uh, uh, GPS coordinates or global positioning satellite coordinates. Um, so GPS coordinates, were you actually given the latitude and longitude um, specific areas to go to? to search? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And what area of um, town were these latitude and longitudes or G GPS coordinates within? So um, if you're familiar with the area of the Courtney Campbell Causeway, um, we were on the north side or in the side that's uh, closest to Safety Harbor um, and more to the Pinellas side um, of the causeway. Were you aware if those were in fact the coordinates where the victim's body had been located by Clearwater Police? That's what I understood when they gave me the coordinates. Did you do anything specific um, prior to going and searching in the water um, with regards to the information that you were provided? Yes, ma'am. So I, I did a, a web-based search uh, through the, the NOAA uh, website uh, to kind of gain like, a historical uh, view or information on tides and what the winds were doing. Um, in that Why is it day. that you did that? 
Well, it, what it does is it actually helps us uh, get a bigger picture of what was going on uh, that day. Um, and also, tides have the influence of moving things to and fro uh, as the tides come in and come out. Um, it gives that ability. And the winds do the same thing. It's, it's possible that the winds could adjust and everything. So we wanted to make a good, complete search of the area based on all the information that we could gather. And that's why I did that. Um, and specifically, was the main item that you were asked to search for was the suitcase. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, what was the next thing you did after you did some research with regards to the winds and the tides? So um, I gathered uh, the, the members of my team. Uh, it was a smaller group uh, on that particular day. And uh, we went over all the information that was gathered. Um, and we put in our own input from our different experiences, uh, especially as we talk about that, that particular area, um, and formulated a plan for a, a dive and a search. When you say it was a smaller team, do you recall how many other members besides you were part of this team? It could have been between uh, five to six members. So after you um, discuss what the plan is going to be, uh, is there a particular date that you then go respond to the Courtney Campbell Causeway? Yes, ma'am. We began our search on the, I believe it was the 21st of May. And what do you do on that date? So uh, one of the things that we... Uh, we discussed and, and wanted to deploy uh, was a device called the side scan sonar to begin our searches that way. Can you describe what this device looks like and what you use it for? Sure. So a side scan sonar actually comes in two different parts. Um, if, if you look at undersea adventures or anything like that on a Discovery Channel, sometimes you'll see it be in the form of a, like a torpedo. So that part is the actual sonar itself. Um, that part actually is the one that goes in the water. It's trailed either next to or behind uh, a boat. Um, then the other part is just simply a laptop that contains a program that interprets what the signals are when they're coming back. Uh, when you go there on May 21st of 2014, are you um, putting the device into the water and on the shoreline, or are you actually in the water or on a boat in the water? No, we're actually deploying it off of a boat. So we're, we're staved off a little bit from shore, um, and then we go ahead and initiate the device by putting it in the water, turning it on, making sure everything is functioning correctly. Uh, and then we start beginning what we call a swath, which is nothing more than just a path that we take. Um, and the laptop actually helps us. Uh, it gives us a map and kind of keeps us on track on where we are searching. And what are you seeing on this laptop from this um, torpedo device? So I'm not, I'm not the scientist part of this, but um, what I can tell you is that by using radio signals um, and, and using sonar, it actually pings down to the bottom of, of whatever it is that we're looking at, on, in this case, the, uh, the bay. And then in the return, uh, the signal comes back and it interprets to us on the screen. So you look at the screen, and it kind of gives you an outline of what um, things look like underwater, but not under, the, under the, the, the actual hard surface of the bay. So is it whatever's laying on top of the, um, the bottom or that's, where you would stand? That's correct. For lack of a better term. Um, what direction or what area do you initially search on May 21st using this device? So we started at the area where the coordinates that were given to us um, as, as uh, the, the point where the victim's body was uh, actually recovered, our understanding. And then we started to head uh, west along the shoreline, keeping you know in the same direction as the shoreline. So is that heading um, towards Pinellas? Correct, yes. And so, are you still on the north side of um, the causeway? Yes, ma'am. And you said you head west. How far west do you go? So from the coordinates we were there, we went all the way as far as the boat could go, which came pretty close to the end of the causeway. So where the land bridge is, right to where the main part of the uh, land is on the Pinellas side. And how far away are you from the shoreline when you're um, heading west and direction towards Pinellas? We are more or less about 30 yards away from shore. Um, does the torpedo go in a straight line that you're just searching, or how, how is it um, that you make sure you cover an entire area? So um, the torpedo is alongside our boat, in particular in this case, because it's a little bit shallow and we have better control of the device. Um, but also what I'm able to do is actually expand the, the search area underneath. So even though we may have been 30 yards um, away from shore, I'm capturing 30 yards on either side of the boat. Did you finish your search once you got over to the Pinellas side, or did you search any other area on that day? Uh, no, ma'am. We actually came back. Uh, we turned around and started heading back west or towards Tampa. Um, and we no, also, west or east? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's uh, east. Okay. We went back east. 
uh, towards Tampa. Uh, from there, I shortened up the, uh, the, the, the area to be covered. So originally we started at 30, I shortened it just a little bit uh, because we were coming a little bit closer, but it still allowed for a little bit of an overlap um, as we were moving back to the west towards Tampa. Right. And how far east do you head back towards Tampa? Uh, we take that all the way to the main span of the Courtney Campbell Causeway, uh, the bridge that's right there. We stop right at that point. Did you find anything as you went west towards the Pinellas side or back east towards um, the Tampa side? Um, we did find some things that, um, that caught our attention. Mind you, we're looking for a luggage, so part of our thought process was things that had like uh, right angles or things that look, kind of look like this underwater. Um, and we made note of that and actually had, uh, we had one of the divers with us, so uh, we were asked them to go down and take a look at that. So if you saw something that um, drew your attention to a particular area, someone actually gets in the water? Yes, ma'am. Mm. And what do they do when they get in the water? So they'll deploy off of a secondary boat. We usually keep uh, the crew, the, the sonar crew, on one boat, and we'll keep a diving crew on, the, on another boat, being that we were kind of shorthanded. Uh, we only had the one diver on that particular day. Uh, they go down in the water, um, do the search area where we, we um, actually tell them to go. And, and also, uh, when we do find hits, what we call hits is something that's interesting <laughs> to us. Uh, we'll deploy a buoy um, right there. As soon as we see, we see something that's interesting, we'll do a cross uh, cross section uh, search of that, or meaning that we'll go in one direction and come back and find another one, just to verify what we're looking at. We'll throw a, a buoy, uh, and then the diver just simply goes up to the buoy, goes down, and sees what's in that general area. How deep was the water in this area? Um, generally, it was um, I would say maybe six to eight feet. Um, did the diver locate anything that was of value with regards to this investigation on that day? No, ma'am. Um, did you conclude any other further searches on this May 21st of 2014? No, I, I believe, uh, if, if I recall the, my report, we, there was some weather moving in. Usually it's lightning, and then we terminate uh, our operations once lightning is in the area. Did you conduct any further searches on other dates? Yes, ma'am, we did. Um, and when did you go back out to conduct further search? I believe we returned on the 27th And was your did you... Was your plan the same as it was before? Um, almost. We kind of we incorporated the same area that we were searching on, or being that it was on the north side of the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Um, but we also incorporated some things that we want to look at. In, in that area, when you're looking at, at the bottom of that particular waterway, um, there are actually there are deep holes that sometimes the, the sonar doesn't actually pick up. But we did identify that there was a deeper hole um, that's caused by natural occurrences. Um, so we designated those, and we wanted to make sure that we, we actually put somebody down um, into the hole to see if there was anything down there that we might have missed. Did you have divers with you on the 27th when you went back out? Yes, ma'am. We, we pretty much had a full complement that day. And how many people was that? Um, it could have been between 10 to 13, 13 being the max number. Um, on this day, did you have the sonar device that you were utilizing, or was it just looking at those two deep hole areas? No, uh, we had it with us, but we didn't deploy it this time. Uh, we only utilized the laptop portion of it to gain uh, GPS coordinates and kind of reviewing some of the things that we saw at those coordinates. Um, but we, we went ahead and went for more uh, intense search by using something called Jack Stay searching. Jack Stay? Yes, ma'am. S-T-A-Y. And what kind of searching is that? So... Uh, this one is kind of uh, difficult to explain, but I'll, I'll do my best. So what we do is we set up a perimeter um, with buoys and weights uh, to designate this is the area that we want to search. So from there, we'll attach a line on both ends of the buoys. Um, and then using the weights, we will go ahead and start doing a search um, straight down the middle with a diver on each side of the line. They'll go up uh, till they reach the other end of the, uh, the perimeter, turn back around by moving the jack stay, uh, making it look almost like a Z pattern. So they'll come back down the same way um, till they reach the bottom end of the search pattern, then move the jack stay a little bit over. Usually it's an arm's length uh, over, and then re and return, and they'll just keep doing those Z-type patterns back and forth. So let me go back for a moment. Did you use this jack stay searching method um, before or after the divers looked at those two deeper areas that you had seen back on the 21st? No, so we incorporated the two deeper areas with the jack stay. We, okay. we wanted to make sure that we covered that on that on that particular day with that type of search. 
Um, what area was this that you performed this jack stay um, search, and um, how large was it? So if we went back to the reference point where um, the, the coordinates that were given to us originally, um, we went ahead and worked 30 yards both east and west from those points with the jack stay. From the location where the body had been located? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, how far out from the shoreline were you? Um, so we would probably between 10 to 20 uh, yards is where we And are go. you on boats on this day? Um, normally, yes, we are because it's just easier to get in and out of um, as opposed to coming in through land. So um, we did, but we also had some members that did show up by land. Um, and how many divers are utilized in this jack stay method of search? So actively, um, we have uh, at least two divers are doing the active search. Um, we'll also keep a complement of safety divers um, and tenders. So, and, and a tender is nothing more than the person that's holding the line that's connected to the actual diver. So we can make signals to them and communicate that way. Did the divers locate anything of value to this investigation? No, ma'am. After you were um, completed, did you <clears throat> report back to your superior? Correct. With regards to your findings or um, negative findings? Yes, ma'am. Was that the last day that you um, went out to conduct any search of the area? Uh, no, ma'am. We went one more time on the 29th of May, I believe. And what is it that you did on the 29th? So uh, Detective Columbia made contact with our, our unit again, um, and this time he told us that Temple Terrace uh, Police Department had actually uh, received some information through uh, actual NOAA. I don't, I don't know the details of that. Um, but they actually gave us a secondary search uh, area to look at. Uh, which was along the Courtney Campbell Causeway as well. And this is information that is being relayed to you through other um, law enforcement officers, yes, is that correct? That's correct. So based upon the information that you um, ascertained, where is it that you then responded on the 29th? So if we're looking at the Courtney Campbell Causeway, where the main bridge begins more on the Tampa side, um, we went ahead and looked on the south side of the causeway, um, and went from the base of the bridge all the way to where the entrance of the boat ramp is, which would be across from the, uh, the, the causeway. So the south side of the causeway from the Tampa side to, if you would have been looking from the south side to the north side to where the body was found. Correct. Do you recall how, what the distance was that that search was? Uh, we were at least 50 feet away uh, from shore. And um, what specifically device or search method did you use on this day? So there it's a little tricky. Uh, on that particular day, the, the tide was a little bit out. Uh, I do remember that. And then um, what we did is we, we did a shoreline search, uh, which is basically we walked the shoreline through the rocks and everything to see if we can find anything there. Um, also, um, what we did is we lined up all the divers that we could gather, um, and we just went shoulder to shoulder, and then some in shallower water, some a little bit deeper, uh, almost like waist, waist deep. And we just walked the entire uh, length of the causeway where we went from the base of the bridge to the entrance of the um, boat ramp. Do you recall how many um, members were with your team on that day? Um, we lost, a f I would say, maybe half, so let's, let's I'll probably say around 10. And um, you said you walked shoulder to shoulder, and how far up was the water on you all when you were doing this search? So the ones that were obviously closer to shore were a little bit uh, shallower, but the ones that were closer or further out um, were in uh, waist deep water. Did you locate anything of value to the investigation on that day? No, ma'am. Judge Maver, moment? Yes. How long were you um, specifically with the dive team and marine unit with the Tampa Police Department? Approximately 15 years. And had you um, utilized this jack stay method and the shoreline method and the sonar method prior to May of 2014? Yes, ma'am. No further questions, Judge. Okay, Cross? Hey, Good morning. Good morning, sir. So initially, um, the, the, the initial searches that you do primarily take place on the northwest side of the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, in the general area where the body was found. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the search on the 29th, May 29th, 2014, um, is the result of additional information being provided by NOAA. Correct. It's my understanding. Right. And, and uh, this information was provided to you by another law member of law enforcement. Yes, sir. 
and it suggested that NOAA had done their own calculations based on tides and currents and, and winds and had come up with a different location uh, where they opined that it was likely the body was placed into the water. That's my understanding, yes, sir. Okay. And that location happened to be uh, on the Can south... Can I back to see your site? Uh, overruled, go ahead. And that location happened to be on the south east side of the of the causeway. Yes, sir. Okay. So so uh, basically their calculations would place the body on the opposite side of the bridge of where it was located, right? That's my understanding. Okay, and would have to pass through the underneath the center span and then drift to the west uh, in order to be uh, found where it was found. That's my understanding. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, redirect. Nothing further, Judge. Okay, may this one speak excused? Yes, Judge. Okay, thank you. Thank redirect. you, Okay, one more witness. Okay. Do you saw the square apartment testimony you about to give in this class? Is the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth will help you God? Okay, this way, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Would you please state your name and spell both names, please? Uh, sure. My full name is Amarina McFadden. Amarina is A-M-O-R-E-E-N-A. -E -E I usually go by Amy, A-M-Y. Uh, my last name is McFadden, M-A-C-F-A-D-Y-E-N. All right. And ma'am, how are you employed? I am employed with the National Oceanic and Atmosphere Administration. Is that commonly called NOAA? Yes, it is. All right. And how long have you worked for them? I was hired as a contractor in 2000 and nine and then became a full-time federal employee in 2011. And what office do you work out of? The Office of Response and Restoration. I'm based in Seattle, Washington. Out of Seattle? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, did law enforcement in this case, law enforcement officials from the Temple Terrace Police Department, did they contact your agency um, and make inquiries of your organization about possibly assisting with a case here in Tampa Bay? Yes, they did. Okay. And were you provided a basic set of facts about the death of Felicia Williams and where she was ultimately located within Old Tampa Bay? Yeah, I was presented with um, some very limited information about the location of where she was found. Okay. And you were given date, date and time? Date and time, yes. All right. And <clears throat> did you conduct some type of an analysis in this case? I did. I did. Uh, basically, I used some of the tools that we use in our office to do some drift modeling um, to see how, um, you know, we have tools for looking at how... Um, uh, usually I'm looking at pollutants in my work or objects like marine um, debris would drift um, under the influence of ocean currents and winds. Um, so in this case, I use those tools um, to look at the drift, uh, how the victim's body might have drifted under the influence of ocean currents. <coughs> so what, what exactly were you being asked to do? Um, so I was being asked, um, I don't, the conversation with the, tech, the, with the detective was in 2014, so I don't exactly, exactly remember how he phrased it, but um, my recollection is that they wanted to look at the area from which, within Tampa Bay, from which the body could have originated such that it would naturally drift to the location where it was found. So you were asked to provide a, uh, an area where she possibly could have been deposited and ended up where she was? Yes. Okay. So you were kind of working it backwards? Exactly. From where she was found, trying to figure out where she could have possibly been um, deposited and ended up in that location? Exactly. All right. So in essence, um, you were trying to ask her to determine possible locations where she could have entered the water, I guess. Yes. <clears throat> did you use some type of a software to conduct that analysis? I did. I used a, um, a drift model that um, takes um, as inputs the currents, um, the modeled currents within Tampa Bay, and then also the wind forecast or, the, or wind observations in this case since we were working in the past. Okay. So drift analysis, I think you, is that what you called it earlier? I think you did a drift yes. analysis. Okay. And did the analysis also involve the tides that were occurring during the evening of May 16th going into the morning and the following day of May 17th? Yes, the currents within Tampa Bay are um, predominantly tidally influenced, so it, it, um, 
it included title analysis of the currents, yes. Does that type of analysis allow you to give with any specificity or to ascertain with any specificity exactly where her body was deposited? I know there's, there's a lot of uncertainty in this type of analysis, both in um, how the body would have moved under the influence of currents and winds, as well as just our ability to predict the ocean currents within, um, within a complicated system like Tampa Bay. Um, and then our, our observations uh, tend to be in discrete locations. Uh, for things like wind um, observations. So there's, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty. Um, and as I um, discussed with the detective, uh, you know, it was kind of a guidance product more than a specific, um, a specific result on where the body would have entered the water, but more a, you know, like, like you said before, kind of a, the most likely region under which natural transport processes could have allowed the body to drift to that location. Okay. <clears throat> So would any of your results you would arrive at be anything, um, be anything more than simply possibilities? No. Okay. And did you prepare a report of some kind in this case? I, I did. I did a, a short uh, written summary for the, for the detective, which included a couple maps and um, some information about tides and currents. And in your report, did you, in fact, report on possibilities as to where her body could have been deposited and ended up where it was recovered? I did. All right. And did you end up coming up with two suggested possibilities or two areas where her body could have been deposited? Yes, I believe in the report I indicated two likely areas as well as the, you know, kind of outer boundary from which, outside of which it would unlikely for the okay. body to be transported that far. <clears throat> And the two possibilities, did one of them include where the body was found, that she could have been deposited where the body was found? Yes. Okay. And is that just as possible as the other area that you concluded she could have been deposited? I believe in my report I stated that it was just as possible. Okay. What were the two possibilities? Now, we've already talked about the one being that she was deposited where she was found. Mm -hmm. And where was the other location that was just as possible? Right. The, the other location that I indicated was based on, a, you know, running the model basically in this backwards mode, um, and it was to the east um, on, the, on the south side of the Courtney Campbell Bridge, on the east side of the bridge. I'm going to publish states B, A, previously admitted. Just ask them to look over your right shoulder. And I'm just going to... Um, direct your attention to this area here, the dark area being Tampa Bay and the Courtney Campbell Causeway, also known as Delta Bay here, and there's a marker where the body was recovered. Okay, do you have your bearings on that satellite map, what we're looking at? I do. Okay, so this direction I'm pointing in would be north, this would be west, back to the east, and then this area down here would be to the south. Okay. So we're dealing with the Courtney Campbell Causeway, which is labeled in this map so I'm going to zoom in a little closer on that. Did you end up in your report, I don't know if you have it in front of you, if you don't, I can bring it to you or a copy of it. I don't have it with me. Okay, let me bring you a copy of it. Thank you. Can you show us using your report the area that is the area of probability, uh, like the entire area where her body could have gone into the water? Right, so you want me to stand yeah, up and illustrate? Yeah, could you sure. run your finger around it and show us? Okay. It's basically to the um, north part of this bay here, and then kind of enveloping to the east side of the bridge, and then not actually very far to the south, just due to the prevailing currents and winds. So predominantly this area. And would it include the area where the body was recovered? Yes. Okay. Now, within your report, and you, we talked about two notable areas that you came up with as possible deposition areas or most likely. Did you come up with a most likely origin point yes. in your analysis? The most likely origin would be based on if the body was floating for the entire time from within the time frame I was given by the detective. So that's running the drift analysis backwards for the full okay. 18 or so hours. And can you show us just where that was on this map? Oh, 
is right in this region. Okay. And then you indicate in your report it is also probable the body entered the water on the north side of the bridge, either near where it was found or further to the east. So can you show us where that is? Sure. This is um, the position I was given by the detective, the body recovery location. And so basically my report is saying that um, anywhere um, you know, on that north side of the bridge is also likely just due to the prevailing northerly winds. Um, and then slightly further to the east, again, okay. because of the direction of the winds. Now, you indicated prevailing northerly winds. When a wind is, is labeled as being northerly or northeastern, what does that mean? That means it's blowing from the north, so okay. it would be um, moving things towards the south. All right, so it's not blowing towards the north, it's coming out of the north heading south. That's correct. All right, so if Miss Williams' body is deposited <coughs> where it's found, you're going to have winds blowing down from the north on top of the body, pushing it up against the rocks that are on that shoreline. That's correct. Is that one of the reasons that you give for your determinations, just as likely or just as possible that her body was deposited where it was found? Yes, the, the winds were a big factor in that. Okay. Is there any greater level of certainty that you can give us as to these conclusions other than that either one is possible? Yeah, I did not do analysis to look at the likelihood of either one being more probable. Um, and that's, you know, given the uncertainties with, it makes a very large difference um, when exactly the uh, victim's body came ashore. And we don't know that with any, that certain, um, with any certainty. Because she could have been there for all day long before she was located. Yeah, I don't, I don't okay. know the answer to that. And when you say came ashore, that's assuming that she was anywhere other than where she was deposited. Right. right. If she was deposited right there on the shoreline. That is correct. Okay. <clears throat> Would it be fair to say that the analysis you conducted is not an exact science? I would agree with that. That your drift analysis is basically backwards engineering kind of, I guess for lack of a better term, to determine all possible locations that she could have been deposited into the water. Yes, the, the greatest certainty in it is, um, you know, that outer envelope, that it's unlikely under natural processes that it would, the body would have drifted further than that. Okay. Outside of this, let me just, well, I can do it over here. Okay. Outside of this area that you gave us, all the way around pretty much the north side of Tampa Bay, and some of down here on the, on the south side of the causeway. Yes. Okay. We have one moment, Your Honor? Yes. I have nothing else, Your Honor. Okay, cross. Is that what that is? Yes, that's enough. Good morning, I believe. Still morning? I think so. Um, you a professor or? Uh, I have a PhD in PhD, physical okay. oceanography. All right. And you work for NOAA. You work for NOAA for how long? Uh, since 2009. All right. And you were contacted by law enforcement uh, back in May of 2014, right? That's correct. Uh, you were contacted uh, to assist them in an investigation involving uh, a nine-year-old girl who had died. That's correct. Okay. Um, certainly a significant um, case, right? Yes. yes? Okay. And... Um, would it be fair to say you're a scientist? Yes. Okay. And um, if, in fact, as a scientist working for NOAA, if law enforcement contacts you and asks you questions and you're not comfortable giving them answers, you're going to tell them that, listen, I mean, I'm a scientist, but I, I can't really answer these questions, right? Yes. Okay. If you need additional information before you can opine or do your trajectories, you'll tell them that, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And, and in this case, you had obtained information that you deemed sufficient for you to proceed with your work, right? Yes, within the uncertainties that I specified to the detective. Absolutely. But you had, you had the, the, the weight and the height of, of the deceased victim, right? Yes. You had the exact coordinates of where uh, the victim was located? Yes. 
you, had, you didn't have to, to worry about future forecasts because you had the historical information about the tides and the currents and the winds, right? Uh, the histor some of that historical information is modeled, so there is uncertainty in those fields. Well, but, but it's certainly better than having to predict in, into the future, right? Yes. And certainly it was enough information where you felt like as a scientist, I can assist law enforcement and I can do a trajectory and I can try to see if I can help them, right? Yes. Okay. And so in doing that, um, you went through all kinds of calculations and you actually prepared a trajectory of what you thought was the most likely place where the body was placed into the water, right? Into Tampa Bay. I specified the area, yes, and I identified some well, possibilities. You, you, you recall, on, 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 this is a map that um, was provided to you, and you looked at it, but you recall, you also provided a second map to the Office of the State Attorney, or to the investigators, right? Yes, I did. And on that second map, uh, you marked specifically on the southeast corner of the Courtney Campbell Causeway, and you indicate, you mark it, and you say, most likely origin of the body, right? I did mark that, yes. Right. Most likely, right? That's what the plot says. Sure. It doesn't say, I can't really tell, right? It does right. not say that. Okay. And, and that is based on, on um, law enforcement also telling you that the most likely time that the body was placed into the waters of the Bay, did you recall the time? That the body, I believe I was told, I don't have my report in front of me, but I believe it was around 11.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. Right. So between 11.30 p.m. on May 16th until 1 a.m. on May 17th, those were the parameters that, that you were given and that you used to come up with your conclusion that the most likely origin was on the southeast corner or, or, or southeast of, of, of the bridge, right? Yes, that's the most likely origin if the body came ashore shortly before it was found. Well, but, but, but when you report it to law enforcement, do you not specifically, you don't say, you mark where the body was found, right? Yes. You don't say it's equally likely that the body was deposited into the spot where it was found, right? I believe the report does say something well, along those lines near the end. Yes. It indicates it is also probable that the body entered the water on the north side of the bridge, either near where it was found or further to the east. Right? Yes. But your conclusions were it is most likely that the body was placed in off of the, of the, of the Courtney Campbell Causeway on the east side and on the south side of the bridge, right? Right. Again, I say that was the most probable scenario given that the body was floating for that entire length of time between when it was deposited and when it was found. Ma'am, can we agree that the language do, that you use in your report is not most probable, it's most likely? Can yes. we agree with that? Yes. Okay. And that would mean, based on your calculations, that the body would float south into Tampa Bay, under the main bridge, and then back uh, west on the north side of the bridge where it was found, right? That drift pattern was consistent with the tidal currents, yes. Sure, based on your scientific experience and based on the data that you were provided, right? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Ms. McFadden. By simply saying most likely louder and louder in this courtroom, does that make it any more possible? No, I did not do any kind of stati rigorous statistical analysis as to which right. location was more likely. And in fact, you just indicated that your analysis, where you're saying it's most likely that she would have come in on an area here, and it's not an exact area. You give a length of area here, correct, in red? That's and correct. And that's part of your overall... On your maps, your overall area, which is basically this whole north, old Tampa Bay almost, just to the, just to the, I guess, west of where the body is found. It's part of that entire area of possibilities, right? Yes. All right. And your whole analysis in this trajectory analysis, or what did you call it earlier? A drift analysis. Drift analysis, I'm sorry. 
is based on the proposition that the body was floating for the entire length of time till just before it was found at 3.30 the next day, correct? That's correct. So if it, if it had been up against the rocks for hours and hours and hours, and the victim's body had been coming up onto the rocks over and over and over, and her skin was almost removed from her body, the top of her skin, from the, from the top of her body that was face down, that would, be, that would change your analysis, wouldn't it? Yeah, the, if you decrease the amount of time that, um, you know, that the, the, that the body was floating freely under, you know, under the motion of the currents and the winds, then that basically shrinks that area to closer to where the victim was found. It shrinks the area closer to where the victim was found. Is that why you put in your report that it's just as possible the body was found, was deposited where it was found? Right, because I had no knowledge of how long it was between when the body Right. It was seen and how long it had been there pri prior to that. And you qualified your report in that respect, correct? I did. And you let the detectives and the law enforcement officers in this case know the limits of your opinions, correct? I did. All right. And, again, if the body had been in the location where it was recovered for many, 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 many hours, even from the point of when it was deposited, it had been there the whole time, as evidenced by damage to the victim's body, that completely changes this analysis, doesn't it? Or radically changes it. It does change it. Okay. I have nothing else, Your Honor. Okay. Do you want to remain briefly? Otherwise, I would ask that you remain and I'll be following you. Okay, go ahead. You don't have your report with you? I do not. Okay. Can I approach you? Yes. Take a look at that and tell me if that appears to be the report. It is. Okay. On several occasions, um, Mr. Harmon suggested that in your report, you indicate that it is just as likely that the body was found on the northwest side of, of the Court of Campbell Court. That's a mistake. That's not what I said. Okay. I and checked. again, the jury can remember what the questions were and were not. So, okay? So I'm giving you limited recross. So let's not paraphrase, just ask a question. Do you indicate in your report that it is just as likely that the body was found on the northwest side of the court? I mean, that the body was deposited on the northwest side of the causeway, or do you say that it's also probable that it was found at that location? I believe the I la top of the last page it might help you. I'd say it is also probable, are my okay. exact words. Okay. And if, if I could approach, and this will be defense exhibit um, three. I could approach. Uh, yes. What is it? Have you shown it to the state? I did. Okay. You asked, Your Honor. Do you recognize this image? I do. Okay. Is that, in fact, your final image that's been referenced and discussed in here today? Yes, that's the map I produced. Does it, in fact, mark the, pl the place where you say it's most likely that the body was deposited into Tampa Bay? Right. I, I have a pin marking a place that says most likely origin with the text describing it. Okay. Does it also have, like, a red uh, area about maybe half of an inch below that? It does. And is that the area that was referenced that suggests that that's the general area where you believe the body was most likely deposited? If the body flo was floated for the entire 18 or so hours before it was found. Might it be possible, uh, might it be helpful to show the jury that the area where you believe is most likely? You know, at this time I would, I would move to introduce Exhibit 3. First of all, the question was it finished being asked, and so at this point in time, do you object to him showing his exhibit during your case in chief? Are you right? Can we approach him? Yeah, and this is going way beyond the cross. Um, okay, any further questions on your limited recross? Yes, sir. No, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Okay, may this witness now be excused. I was going to ask for just one or two questions, so I'm going to be correct, Your Honor, since it is the state's witness. Yes, very limited, only on any issues raised in the recross. Your maps that you provided are integral to your report, correct? 
Yes. And the language of your report are just as important as the maps to explain what your findings yes. are in the map. Is that correct? All right, I can rephrase. Are, okay. Is the language of your report just as integral to the maps in explaining what's on the maps? Yes, the language is important for understanding the uncertainties and caveats that right. went into the result. And this is all based on the proposition the body was floating for the entire time until just before it was located. Yes. Meaning away from where it was located. It was floating about and it came ashore just before it was located. Yes. Right. Another okay, may this way to stop be excused. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're Thanks. free to go. Safe travels home. Thank you. All right. Um, Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's now 10 to 12, so it's probably a good time for us to go ahead and take our uh, lunch recess. So we will reconvene at 1.20. So please just remember, um, on the break, you're not to discuss the case with anyone. You're not to listen, watch, read any news accounts. You're not to do any independent investigation. We will be back at 1.20 with the next witness. All right? Thank you. All right. Jury exit. Go ahead and do your